on the top of your paper. Thank you, Ms. Pittman. All right. Your I mean statement is very wordy and very long, which is why I typed it for you so you wouldn't have to write it. It's kind of confusing too, so I, want, I need you to kind of focus on it. It says, I can use the distributive property. So this is the property we're going to be using today. Um, what does distribute mean? Who knows what distribute means? Okay. The breakdown. The breakdown. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody's parents work for um, the distribution center for um, academy? Anybody work for that? Parents for that? Y'all know what um, FedEx, UPS? They're a distributive co company. So basically, when I order something on Amazon, right? Because how many of y'all like order stuff on Amazon? Me. Okay. When you order something on Amazon, you're supposed to get a product, right? Something's supposed to come to your door, right? Well, how does it get there? Shipping. Shipping. They deliver it. They distribute the product to you. Okay. So basically, it means giving it out. You could all, Miss Pittman could also distribute candy, uh -huh. and if she distributed it equally among everyone in here, she would distribute to each person. The same amount. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, they do distribute cements, like when you're building the house or a pavement. They distribute the cement, make it even. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. You do. You do. All right. So we're going to use the distributive property, meaning we're going to be passing out a number evenly, and we're going to express it as a Sum. What does the sum mean? What operation gives a sum? Add. add. So we're going to represent it as adding. Okay. Of two whole numbers with a common factor. So what should we've been talking about common factors with our GCF, right? Y'all, on your paper, you need to circle or underline the words Miss Pittman is doing. Those are very important keywords. So whenever you see Sum and common factors, you're going to use the distributive property, okay? And we can tell you, just like I remember um, like when we were preparing for the milestones the past few years, the instructions for doing this can be really wordy and complicated, which is why it's really important for you to pay attention right now and realize the vocabulary that's in this. These are your instructions. This will, this will be what it says to find the distributive property using common factors. Okay. It intimidates sixth graders every year, these instructions do. But you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So when you see common factor, I want you to think GCF. Okay, when you see common factor, I want you to think GCF. Right? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the GCF, we're going to use the slide, Find the GCF, and we're going to put it into the distributive property. Okay? Questions so far? We're good? All right. So the question is, what is the distributive property? We kind of already went over that, and that's on your paper as well. Basically, it's taking two, the sum of two numbers, like 18 and 24, and breaking them down using the slide to write them as a sum with no common factors. Okay? That's what we're doing here. We're breaking it down to look like this. Okay? This is what the distributive property is. And what that means is when a number is next to a parenthesis, it means multiplication, right? Just if I did 2 times 2, that equals what? 4. Four. I can use parentheses to represent multiplication. Do you see how these numbers are enclosed in the parentheses? Mm -hmm. That means this 6 needs to be multiplied or distributed to each number through multiplication. So it would be, what's 6 times 3? 18. 18. Bring down my operation sign. What's 6 times 4? 24. Do you notice how we get the same numbers here as we did at the beginning? 
That's what the distributive property is. Okay? So you're going to see on the next slide that it's using the slide, and you're going to fill in these bones right here. These are the bones. It's a, a number, parentheses, a number, whatever the operation sign is, a number, and parentheses. Why do they call it the bones? We call it the bones. Miss Vickers taught us to call it the bones because that's what they call it in eighth grade. Kind of looks like some fish bones or something like that. Um, so it, that's just what we call it. It's just really easy to think of it as the bones. All right. So I'm going to slide this over onto your, your screen. And so instead of me writing in the blanks, the blanks are actually filled in for you on your screen. They are bolded and underlined. So wherever your blanks are on your note sheet, they're filled in on your um, screen, on your Chromebook. So to find the distributive property, we use the ladder method, or some of you may call it the slide, either way. Um, so the first thing, so if you like to call it slide, instead of putting ladder, you could put slide, okay? When doing so, we have to make sure the bottom rung of the ladder, the bottom numbers, these numbers right here, are in lowest terms. We can't pull anything else out of them. We try to get them as far down as possible, where nothing will come out of both of them. Alright, the next step is to multiply on the left to find the GCF. Do you remember how we draw the G? You're, that's not filled in for you either. That's for you to fill in. But if we have, once we go through the process of the slide, we set up 18 and 24 in the slide. The common factor we can pull out is 3. 18 divided by 3 gave us 6. 24 divided by 3 gave us 8. We know three, 6 and 8 are even, so they pull 2 out. 6 divided by 2 gave us 3. 8 divided by 2 gave us 4. Will anything come out of 3 and 4? No, it won't. Because the numbers are next to each other on the number line, they're not going to come out. So that's when we draw our G. Okay? Do we add or multiply inside our G? We multiply. Make sure you draw a multiplication sign inside your G so you can remember that you multiply. This is all review, right? We've been doing this the last two days. So there's nothing new yet, right? Okay, we've just done the slide. We've just found the GCF. All right, what's three times two? Six. So what's our GCF? Six. So here's the next step, step three. This is where we get into the distributive property. Basically, we write the numbers at the bottom of the ladder inside the parentheses or the bones and use the operation sign from the original expression. So, what that means is you're going to draw, you would draw the bones. You would draw a line, parentheses, line, whatever operation sign there is. Since we're adding, we put addition. If we were subtracting, what would go in the right here? The add sign. If it was subtraction, what would go in our operation blank? Subtraction. subtraction. Line, close the parentheses. Now all we do is fill in the numbers. If we're in the GCF for the first blank. We drop the 3 down. We drop the 4 down. And we're done. That's all you have to do. There's no other... There's not any other math to it or anything. So make sure in your note page you drew the arrows because the arrows aren't there for you. Draw the arrows so you know where they go. Where you, you know where your numbers go.
All right, questions so far on how to do this. So be sure you filled in your blanks and that you filled in a way to do the GCF. Um, so basically, we're just using the slide, and then we set up the bones and put the numbers in the bones. Okay? All right, you think you want to try one? Yes. All right, so on the back of your note sheet, what you're going to do is you're going to do a practice problem that's going to come up on your screen. Um, you're going to work it out on the back, and then you'll submit it, okay? 